سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic Qiyam al-Layl, the night prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A very interesting topic once again. And the first question I have for you is, as we've often been doing, first question, what is the meaning of the term Qiyam al-Layl? And can you give us the differentiation between that term and tarawi which is often misconstrued alhamdulillah was salatu was salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajmain amma ba'd a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabbi shahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli as far as the word qiyamul layl is concerned it is broken up into two words qiyam Qiyam means to stand and Al-Layl means the night. So literally it means standing in the night. But in the Sharia, in the Islamic context, it means it is a voluntary prayer which is prayed after Isha and before the break of dawn. And as we are aware that Isha starts after the redness of the sky disappears after sunset, and you can pray this Qiyam layl just before the break of dawn, before the time of Fajr. So Qiyam, the word Qiyam layl was given because a person in this voluntary prayer, he recites long verses of the Quran. So the standing is long. Therefore, it is called as standing in the night, the prayer where you have to stand for a long time. And there are various different words which are used for the same Qiyam layl For example, it's also called as Salatul layl meaning the prayer at night. It's also called as Tahajjud. It's also called as Vitar, also as Tarawi. Salatul layl as I mentioned, means prayer at night, similar to standing in the night, but not for praying. The other word used is Tahajjud, coming from the word Hajada, which means to wake up. So when a person sleeps and he wakes up to pray, it's called as tahajjud also. The other word used is vitar. Vitar meaning odd. And the Prophet always say that we have to, after Isha Salah, we should offer vitar in odd rakats. And the other name used is tarawi. Tarawi comes from the Arabic word raha, which means to rest, which means to relax. Because after a few generations, after the Prophet, People, when they used to read the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan especially, this word Tarawi is mainly used for Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan. So when they used to pray the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, after four rakat they used to rest. So this word Tarawi, from that time onwards, it got stuck to this Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan. It's called as Tarawi. Normally after four rakat they used to rest. And this has continued because they used to pray for long hours. And even now, though they pray for a short time, a few verses, yet in the Qiyamul Layl during Ramadan, they stop. So the word is yet used as Tarawi. But at the time of the Prophet, this word Tarawi was never used. Even while praying during Ramadan, this word was never used. Even the Sahabas never used this word. It came down later on. So the more appropriate word is Qiyamul Layl. Tarawi is not the right appropriate word, but it came later on. But if a person, when he reads for a long time, Ramadan. If he wants to rest, he can rest. But it's not forbidden to rest. If a person is tired and he wants to rest, he can rest. But it's not compulsory, he has to rest. So the more appropriate word is Qayyamul Layl, and it's not Tarawih. Dr. Zakia, 
Next question is, could you tell us something of the excellence of the night prayer, Qiyamul Layl, in Islam? As far as the excellence of Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer is concerned, there are several verses in the Quran, there are several hadith talking about it. I'll just mention a few of them. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Sajdah, chapter number 32, verse number 16, talking about those people who are people of paradise, those who go to Jannah, and he describes these people that their limbs do forsake the bed of sleep, and they call to the Lord in fear and hope. That means they leave aside their sleep, and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in hope and in fear, in taqwa. And continues, and they give in charity from the sustenance they have given, talking about the people of Jannah. Further, if you read in the Quran, it's mentioned in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 17 and 18, that these people, talking about the people of Jannah and the righteous people, they sleep very little in night. And during the early hours of dawn, these people, they pray for forgiveness. Allah further says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 64, that these are the people who spend their night in adoration of their Lord, standing and in prostration, in Qiyam and in Sujood. There are various verses in the Quran. There are various hadith talking about the excellence of this night prayer. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number one, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2612. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the best prayer after the prescribed prayers, after the prayers which are obligatory, which are fard, it is the night prayer. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1131. The beloved Prophet said, the best prayer is the prayer of Dawud al -Salam. And the best fasting is the fasting of Dawud al -Salam. And Dawud al -Salam, he is to sleep the first half of the night. Then he is to spend the next one third of the night in praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the rest of it, the one sixth of night, he is to again sleep. Here again talking about the excellence of the night prayer. A beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1142. A beloved Prophet said that when a person sleeps, the Satan, he ties three knots at the back of his head. And after tying each knot, he whispers and he blows and says, the night is long, so keep on sleeping. And when a person gets up and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first knot is undone. When he does the wudu, the second knot is undone. And when he prays, the third knot is undone. And the person is energetic. And inshallah, he'll be on the straight path for the full day. On the other hand, if he gets up without taking the name of Allah, without doing wudu, without offering salah, then he's lazy and his heart is mysterious. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad further said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number one, in the book of Salah, hadith number 1656. Our beloved Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he descends to the lowest part of the heaven in the last one third of the night. And he says that, is there anyone who wants to supplicate to me and I will answer it? Is there anyone who wants to ask from me and I will give it to him? Is there anyone who wants to seek forgiveness? And I will forgive him. Is there anyone who wants to invest a good deed with me? For I am not unjust and not wasteful. And you can do this till the break of dawn. And there are various excellence spoken about the night prayer. For example, in a Sai Hadith of Tirmidhi, Book of Supplications, Hadith number 3579. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the servant is the closest to his Lord in the last one third of the night. And if he asks him, and if he prays to him during this time, it is the best time that he can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Tirmidhi, in the book of supplications, Hadith number 3499, that when a person asked, that which is the best 
time to pray. The beloved Prophet said that the best time that a prayer will be answered is during the last one third of the night and after the prescribed prayers, after the five obligatory prayers, if you supplicate, then inshallah that's the best time to ask for supplication and the last one third of the night. It's mentioned in Sunan Abu Daud, volume number one, in the book of Salah, hadith number 1417, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has added one more prayer for you, that is the Vitar. And if anyone wants to pray five rakat in Vitar, he may do so. If anyone wants to pray three rakat for Vitar, he may do so. If anyone wants to pray one rakat for Vitar, he may do so. It's further mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number one, in the book of Salat, hadith number 1303. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said that a person who gets up in the middle of the night and prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wakes up his wife and if she doesn't wake up then sprinkle some water on her Allah's mercy and blessing is on such people and that he further continues that Allah's mercy and blessing are on those women who wake up in the middle of the night and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they wake up the husbands and if the husbands don't wake up they sprinkle water on them so again it is one of the best prayers after the obligatory prayers. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu further said, it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, or number one, in the book of Salah, Hadith number 1302. The Prophet's wife, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that the Prophet used to always pray the Qiyam al-Layl, and he never missed it. Even when he was sick and ill, all lethargic, he used to pray, even though he used to pray by sitting. He never missed it. So this was few of the hadith and few Quranic verses which speak about the excellence of the night prayer. Well, thank you very much for the answer, Dr. Zakir. And I'm sure that that's very useful and informative for our viewers to know all about the excellence of the night prayer. In Islam generally, of course. Well, dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll meet soon after a short break. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic, Qiyam al-Layl, the night's prayer. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Now I want to move on to discussing Qiyam al-Layl in terms of Ramadan. Could you give us some information about Qiyam al in the month of Ramadan. All the advantages, all the blessings, all the excellence which are there, which I spoke in the earlier answer for Qiyam al generally, is multiplied in the time of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of mercy, as we discussed earlier, and you get Mosawab, you get multiple times, Mosawab 10 times to 700 times. So all the excellence discussed in the normal time, in the month of Ramadan, it is multiplied. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, form number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2009, that anyone who offers the night prayer in the month of Ramadan with the belief and with seeking Allah's reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. And it's mentioned in the Sahih hadith of Sahih Ibn Hibban, hadith number 3438, that the person who comes to Muhammad and asks him that what if I say there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has got no partners and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if I offer five times obligatory salah prayers and if I fast in the month of Ramadan and if I pray in the night during Ramadan if I offer the night prayer in Ramadan and if I give zakat then what is my position? So the beloved Prophet said that anyone who does all these things, he will be amongst the Siddiqeen, the righteous people, and among the Shuhada, among the martyrs. So this is the importance. Everything is the same, 
but it's multiplied, will be called amongst the righteous people and amongst those who are martyrs. And therefore, a person should see to it that he should offer the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan. It's very important. He should not miss it. And furthermore, besides the spiritual benefits that all that I discussed in the previous answer, there are even physical benefits. When a person fasts for the full day, then during iftar he eats, and then if he offers Qiyamul Layl, it is good for the body. The body is fasting, then he stands, he, in the posture of bowing, and then the sujood, it's a good exercise. And besides getting spiritual benefits, it even gets physical benefits. So as far as possible, a person should see to it that he should not miss the Qiyamul Layl. Excellent. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be praying the night prayer now after you've given that good advice. Uh, the next question is relating to the time that Qiyam al layl should be practiced during the night. What's the best time during the night? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Hadith of Musnad Ahmad, volume number six, page number seven. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has added one more prayer, that is the Vitar. So pray Vitar between Isha and Fajr. That means the time of Isha is after sunset when the redness in the sky disappears. That is the time of Isha. So after you offer Isha, you can pray any time before the break of dawn, before the time of Fajr starts. This is the earliest and the latest where you can pray the Qiyamul Layl. And as I mentioned earlier, Vitar is another name for Qiyamul Layl. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Musannaf Abdul Razak, Hadith number 4623, that a beloved Prophet said, that if someone fears that he will not wake up in the night, then he can offer the Vitar or the Qiyamul Layl in the early part of the night. But if a person knows that he will get up at night, he should pray at night after he gets up from sleep. Because praying in the later part of the night is much better where angels witness for the person. And as I mentioned earlier, the hadith I mentioned earlier of uh, Sai Muslim, or number one, hadith number 1656, it's a hadith which is also there in Sai Bukhari with a different wording. It's muttafiq alaik. It also occurs in Sai Bukhari, volume number two. In the book of Tahajud, Hadith number 1145, our beloved Prophet said that Allah the Supreme, the Glorious, He descends to the lowest part of the heaven during the last one third of the night. And then He asks, Is there anyone who is supplicating to me so that I can answer his supplication? Is there anyone who is begging to me so that I can give him? Is there anyone who is asking forgiveness so that I can forgive him? It's the Muttafiq alaik hadith, occurs in Sahih Muslim, also in Sahih Bukhari. It's further mentioned in the hadith of Tirmidhi, in the book of supplications, hadith number 3579, that the closest a servant is to his creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is during the last one third of the night. And if he prays to him during that time, it's the best. So the Qiyamul Layl, the Vitar, it's immediately after Risha is early, so you can pray up to the break of dawn. But the best time is the last one third of the night. And that's what is further mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, hadith number 2010, where Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him. He said when people were offering the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan immediately after Risha, that it's good, but it would have been better if they offered the last one-third of the night. So praying in the last one-third is the best. But you can start immediately after Isha and pray just before the break of dawn, before the Fajr time. But in the mosque generally, majority of the mosque, they have immediately after Isha, that is approximately two hours after the break of fast, after sunset, plus minus half an hour, most of the mosque, because it's convenient because there are people who are young in the congregation, there are people who are elderly people, there are women. So to make it easier and not to make life difficult for them, because most of them is difficult for them to get up in the middle of the night. So in mature of the mosque, they have it immediately after Isha, about maybe 
two hours or two and a half hours after the break of fast, which is no problem at all. It is better to pray than not to pray, better to pray early than not to pray. But the best time is the last one third of the night. So if some of the mosques have during the last one third of the night, no camel lail in Ramadan, that's the best. But the majority of the mosques have it earlier, which there's no problem at all. Okay, good. I think you can do both, of course. <laughs> so, Alhamdulillah. Allah has made life easy for us. Alhamdulillah. May Allah allow us to do it the whole month, inshallah, and Amen. take all the benefits that you've mentioned and will continue to mention during this interview and the question and answer sessions to come up, inshallah. Dr. Zakir, the next question is relating to the etiquettes of the night prayer. Could you explain some of the most essential etiquettes of the night prayer? There are some hadiths which give us some guidance. There's a hadith which is a Sahih hadith according to Mishak Albani. It's a hadith of Bahaki, where it says that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that when you get up in the middle of the night, then you use the sewaq and then you do wudu and then offer salah. So using the sewaq is the sunnah. Further, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, Hadith number 1154, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, and he gave certain things that when a person gets up in the middle of the night, he can recite, La ilaha illallahu, wadahu la sharika lahu, lahul mulkul wa lahul hamdu, wa wa la kulli shayin kadir, wa alhamdulillah, subhanallah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And then you can recite, Allah makfirli, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me. So these are recitations that you can do when you get up. Our beloved Prophet said, the Sahih Hadith of Sunnah Nisai, Hadith number 1621, where the beloved Prophet said that when he used to get up in the middle of the Salah, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that whenever the Prophet used to get up in the middle of the night, he used to recite, Subhan Rabbil Alameen, means glory be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He used to recite several times. He used to even recite, Subhanallah, we be hamdi. Glory be to Allah and praise be to him. Several times. So these are a few of the tickets for a person when he gets up in the middle of the night to offer the salah. And there's also hadith of Sunan Abu Dawud. It's a say hadith, volume number one in the book of Salah. Hadith number 1324. Once when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi in the night when he was passing by, he heard Hazrat Abu Bakr may Allah be with him reciting the Qiyam al-Layl. And you could hear his voice. And later on he hears the voice of Hazrat Umar may Allah be with him. When both of them come to him the next day, he says to Hazrat Abu Bakr may Allah be with him that I could hear your voice, it was soft, it was low. Abu Bakr may Allah be with him, he replies, that the person who I was praying to, he could hear it. Therefore, I was praying softly. Then he says to Hazrat Umar, may Allah with him, that your voice was loud. So he said that I was trying to wake up those people who were sleeping. And I was trying to shoo away the devil, the shayateen. I was trying to drive them off. So then the Prophet says to Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, that you should increase your voice while offering the Qiyamul Layl. And he told to Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, that you should lower your voice while offering Qiyamul Layl. That means your voice should be moderate, neither too loud, neither too soft, while offering the Qiyamul Layl. And the Talanda Hadith, which is a Sahih Hadith, mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, Hadith number 1322, that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that whenever the Prophet offered the Qiyamul Layl, you could hear his voice in the inner room when he was reciting in the house. That means the voice was moderate, neither too loud, neither too soft. So these are a few of the etiquettes of Camel Life. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Well, dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll meet soon after a short break. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic, Qiyam al-Layl, the night prayer. 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. The next question relates really to the length of time, the length that one should make the night prayer. Is there any indications uh, from Quran Sunnah relating to the length? There are various hadith talking about it and the length can vary, but the Sunnah of the Prophet was that he used to pray usually for long hours. And the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1135, that Asaba says that I joined the Prophet one night while he was offering the Qiyam al -Layl. And it was so long that the evil thought came to me. So when he was asked, what was the evil thought? He felt like sitting down and keeping the Prophet standing. That means it was so long. There's another hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim, point number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 1697, where it says that once a Sahaba, he prays the Qiyamul Layl along with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet started reciting Surah Baqarah. And the Sahaba says that when we finished about 100 verses, he thought the Prophet would bow down, but the Prophet continued. Then later on he thought that another after some verses he would bow down, but he continued. Then he thought that, okay, maybe after Surah Baqarah ends, the Prophet would bow down. But after Surah Baqarah ends, he continues reciting. He recites Surah Nisa. And that again is 176 verses. And after that ends, he recites Surah Al Imran. And he continues leisurely. That means Prophet used to pray for hours. Imagine Surah Baqarah, Surah Nisa, Surah Al Imran. It is about all put together. At least five Jews, imagine, only in that one raqqa. So this was the length at many times. But there's no fixed length. A person can vary as much as one prophet always preferred praying longer. Further, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, Hadith number 873. The beloved prophet, one of the Sahaba says, that when he used to pray, he started the Qiyam al and he, after Surah Fatiha, he read Surah Bakhra. Then he went in the ruku, in the bowing position. And when he was in the bowing position, he stayed there as long as he was standing before. Then he got up, he put his head straight, and he was in the standing position till as much time as he was in the bowing position. Uh -huh. Then he goes in the sujood, and the Prophet was. But naturally, he says that he said Sumar bin Nazim in the Ruku, glory be to Allah. And then in the Sujood, he says Sumar bin Allah, glory be to Allah, who is the highest. And he was in the Sujood position as long as he was in the standing position. And in between the two Sujood also, he was as long as he was in the Sujood position. Saying that all these positions, Qayyam, the Ruku, the standing after Ruku, the Sujood, and the sitting between the two Sujood, he used to take his own time and it used to be long. That means the Qiyam al-Layl was very long. There's another hadith in Sahih Muslim, volume number four. Hadith number 6774. Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that the Prophet, while offering Qiyam al-Layl, the night prayer, he used to stand for such long hours that his feet used to swell. So his wife, Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that all your past and the future sins have been forgiven. So why do you ask for forgiveness so much? Why do you pray for so long? So he said, shouldn't I be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So all the more reason he says you should be thankful. So the Prophet normally used to pray for long hours. So the longer you offer the Qiyamul Layl, the better it is. Well, may Allah give the strength to utilize the night prayer with length, like you've uh, described the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to have done. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakir, is it better, according to Quran and Sunnah, to offer the Qiyam al individually or in congregation? There are hadith which say that a person can offer Qiyam al individually, also in congregation. 
both accepted and all the references I gave, most of them the prophet used to offer together and I gave some references when the Sahaba used to join the prophet, so both are there. But as far as which is better, but natural, the various hadith in say Bukhari saying that if you offer in congregation, you get 27 times more sawab. You know, the two hadith saying that. And further, as far as the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan is concerned, there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Tarawi, hadith number 2012, where once the Prophet, he goes to the mosque, and there he finds that people are offering in the groups. So he offers Salah, the Qiyamul Layl, at night, and many people joined behind him. Next day, the news spreads. And the next night, the full mosque is filled with people. The third night, again, when the Prophet comes to offer the Qiyamul Layl, the mosque is overflowing with people in the congregation, but naturally. The fourth night, again, it is overfilled. But the Prophet he knows people are waiting out again to join him for Qiyamul Layl. He does not go out purposely. And during Fajr, after offering the Fajr Salah, after the Salah is over, and he says that not that I was not aware that the people were waiting for me for the Qiyamul Layl, but I did not want to make it compulsory for you. I don't want people to think that it's compulsory to offer Qiyamul Layl, lest it would be difficult for you to purposely Prophet give a break make it known to the people that it's not fard to offer Qiyamul Layl and he didn't want to make it difficult for the people. But from the hadith you come to know that offering jama is better. And there's another hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud, point number one, in the book of Salah, hadith number 1370. One is the Prophet was offering Qiyamul Layl and he finishes and when he's about to get up, people say that why don't you pray more? So the Prophet says that anyone who prays till the Imam finishes, if he prays with the Imam till he finishes, it is as though he has prayed for the full night. So from these two hadith we come to know that offering Qiyamul Layl in congregation is better than offering individually, irrespective of whether it's in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And actually there's another issue which has come up in my own research, and it relates to the fact that many people consider it a bidah to go into congregation and pray the Qiyam al-Layl. And this started in the Khalifa of Omar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. Could you comment on this? People have a misconception that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he was the one who started this congregation Salah Qiyam al-Layl during Ramadan. It's a misconception. But in fact, it is he who revived the Sunnah of the Prophet. As I mentioned earlier in the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Tarawi, Hadith number 2012, that the Prophet was the person who offered Qiyamul Layl, people joined him in congregation and he allowed it. Then later on, next night, the whole mosque was filled and third night it was overflowing and fourth night didn't come out purposely. From this Hadith we come to know that it was the Prophet who started this and the Sunnah of the Prophet. But at the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be with him, there were hardly any people who prayed that. Even in the starting of the caliphate of Hazrat Umar, it was the same thing, may Allah be with him. It's further mentioned in the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Tarawi, hadith number 2010. The Sahaba says that he was walking along with Hazrat Umar, one of the Muslims, may Allah be with him, and he finds that people were praying individually, and some people were praying in a small group. So, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he gathered all the people and he said, let's make one jama. And he appointed Ubay bin Kaif, may Allah be pleased with him, to lead the salah. And everyone prayed behind him. And later on, when he comes back after a few nights, he finds that people are praying in one congregation. And then he comments, it is preferable to pray when the people are sleeping than what they are praying now. Because, you know, they prayed immediately after Isha Salah, as I mentioned earlier. So praying the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, what people call as Tarawih, it's preferable to pray the last one-third of night. But 
if you pray early also it is no problem. Now coming back to the question when you said that it is an excellent bidda, people misunderstand the statement and they say oh that means the bidda can be good. Bidda is normally in the Sharia means an innovation in the religion. But here Hazrat Umar may live with him, he never used it as a bidda in the religion. There is nothing like bidda which is good. You know because it is mentioned in the hadith of Sai Muslim volume number 1, hadith number 1885 that all innovations in the religion are wrong and they lead to error. And other hadith says that all innovations lead to hellfire. So all innovations are wrong. Now based on this hadith when Omar Malai please have said that it is an excellent bidda, so people normally say that bidda can be good and can be bad, good bidda is allowed. So what he really meant here was bidda in the linguistic term, not bidda in the religion. Because in linguistic term bidda means something which is new. So at that time, people did not pray in one congregation. So he reminded them of the sunnah of the Prophet So it was going back to the sunnah of the Prophet, but for that time it was bidah linguistically, it was something new. So it doesn't mean that Hadha Tumar may live with him, he know it's something in the religion. He took the people back to the sunnah of the Prophet. For example, if I go to a city where people are wearing the trousers below the ankle, and if I say that, you know, wearing above the ankle is the sunnah of the Prophet. But it's a bidah for that time because people, it's new for them. They don't know about it. So it's bidah for that time, but it's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet, wearing the trousers above the ankle. So people misunderstand the statement of Omar Amal Ayyubhidhatim, talking about new for that time and for that place and for the people. But actually, it's going back to the Prophet. So it is not what Hadat Omar Amal Ayyubhidhatim, he innovated it. He told the people that this is what the Prophet did. And there are several such examples. Many Muslims, you know, temporary marriage done by some groups of Muslims. The Prophet had prohibited that. Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He knew about it. So during the seventh Hijri of Tabuk, he said it is wrong. So people think he imposed it. But he knew the Prophet said it was haram, the temporary marriage. You know, it's called as muta. So just because he implemented the sunnah, which very few people knew at that time. And he was there when the Prophet said that muta, temporary marriage is haram. People think that he brought it into the deen. It's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet. Hope that clarified. Well, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. Dr. Zakir, I would call upon you to resolve one of the most common disputes in the Muslim Ummah during the month of Ramadan regarding the number of rakat that are prayed in the Taraweh or the Qiyamah Layl or the night prayer. Is it eight or should it be twenty? <laughs> Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 472, he said that when the person asked that how should you offer the Qiyamul Layl, so the Prophet said that he should offer Qiyamul Layl in two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat, and so on. And when he fears that dawn is approaching, he should offer one rakat. So all the rakat become bitter, become odd. That means you can pray as many as you wish. Later on, have a one number, an odd number, so that everything becomes odd. So as far as the number of rakats are concerned, you can pray as many as you wish. But as far as the practice of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is concerned, this mentioned in Sayy Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1147, the Hadith Aisha, may be pleased with her, she says that the Prophet, while offering Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, used to always offer 11 rakat, not more than 11 rakat. And this is to do even other months. Well, dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll meet soon after a short break. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic, Qiyam al-Layl, the night's prayer. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Dr. Zakia, I would call upon you to resolve one of the most common disputes in the Muslim Ummah during the month of Ramadan regarding the number of rakat 
that are prayed in the Tarawih or the Qiyamah Layl or the night prayer, is it eight or should it be twenty? Our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 472, he said that when the person asked that how should you offer the Qiyamul Layl, so the Prophet said that he should offer Qiyamul Layl in two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat, and so on. And when he feels that dawn is approaching, he should offer one rakat. So all the rakat become bitter, become odd. That means you can pray as many as you wish. Later on, have a one number, an odd number, so that everything becomes odd. So as far as the number of rakats are concerned, you can pray as many as you wish. But as far as the practice of Muhammad is concerned, this mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1147, the Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she says that the Prophet, while offering Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, used to always offer 11 rakat, not more than 11 rakat. And this is to do even other months. That means 8 rakat of Qiyamul Layl and 3 rakat of Vitar. So it becomes 8 plus 3, 11 rakat. And there are various other hadith which always say that all the hadith that we find of the Prophet Muhammad whether it be Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, all of them said that he prayed 8 rakat or this 11 rakat. 11 includes 8 plus 3. And further, the same hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1147, he has Aisha with her when she says that the Prophet always offered 11 rakat in Ramadan and even other times. And she said that he used to offer 4 rakat. And I cannot narrate to you the time, the beauty and the length of this rakat. And it's true, again, offer four rakat. And I cannot narrate to you the beauty and the length of this four rakat. And then you have to offer three rakat, indicating eight plus three. But if you read the practice of the Salaf al-Salihin, of our predecessor, of the Sahabas, the Tabain, Tabi Tabain, we find from records that they prayed 11 rakat, some prayed 13, some prayed 19, some paid 23, some paid 36, some paid 39 rakats also. And if you read the Musanna Ibn Abi Shaiba, volume number 2, page number 165-166, it says that the Tabain, when they offered the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, which is known as Tarawi, they offered 20 rakat. Some place it says that they offered 36 rakat. So as far as the rakats are concerned, as the Prophet, the call, the commander of the Prophet was that read two rakat, two rakat, two rakat, two rakat, as much as you wish, then one. And as I mentioned earlier in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 472, volume number one, you can read as many rakats as you want in two to two and then one. But if you want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, the Prophet always offered eight rakat plus three. So what is permissible? As many as you wish. Eight, 10, 20, 36, no problem and then followed by three with her. But the Prophet offered eight plus three, 11. But you can offer as many as you wish. Well, of course you've mentioned that one could pray as much as you like in terms of uh, the number of rakah. Um, but the sunnah is eight. This is what you've said. That's right. The Prophet offered eight. Alhamdulillah. But he permitted you can offer as many as you wish. Right, right. So as many as you like, but the sunnah is eight. However, um, if a person or a group of people pray eight in one hour and another group of people pray 20 in one and a half hours, which would you say is the best? Yes, here your question has got uh, two portions. One is the number of rakat, other is the length. As I mentioned in the earlier answer, that the longer it is, the better it is. The Prophet said that. And the other is that any rakat is fine, Prophet offered eight. Now, you know, eight and one hour is better, or 20 and one and a half hour is better. Before I answer this question, I'll tell you that if a person is offering his salah in a mosque, which is praying in congregation eight rakat, he should not get up and pray additional 12 and make it 20, because he feels 20 is better. Neither should a person who is offering taraweeh or the qayyam al in Ramadan, 
offers his Qiyamul Layl in a mosque which is offering 20 rakat in Jama. He should not offer 8 rakat and walk out because the Prophet said that a person who prays along with the Imam and ends with the Imam, it is as though he has offered the Salah for the whole night. So we should be more tolerant and agree that the Prophet allowed all types. If a person wants to offer 20, if he's offering in a mosque of 8 rakat in Jama, of 8 rakat in Jama, he can go home and offer the remaining balance of the 20, that's 12 rakat. As far as the question is concerned, which is better, 8 rakat and 1 hour, or 20 rakat and 1 and a half hour? Here again, as I said, that the call, the commandment of the Prophet is that you can offer as many as you wish, and the longer it is, the longer it is better. But the Prophet offered long and 8 rakat. So if you ask me which is better, both acceptable, but the better would be that if he offers the same length, but with eight rakat. Same length, eight rakat, whether it be one hour, two hour, or three hours. So if you ask me one hour with eight rakat is better, or one hour with 20 rakat is better, I would prefer one hour with eight rakat. But as your question is, if it is one hour with eight rakat, and one and a half hour with 20 rakat, I would prefer 20 rakat, one and a half hour. Because the call of the Prophet is longer the better which you are doing. And again, the call is you can offer as many as you wish. So I would prefer 20 rakat and one and a half hour rather than eight rakat and one hour. And that's what we see in the Harmain. There are 20 rakat, but they are long for approximately two hours there. And in the other mosque, they have eight rakat and shorter duration. But in both the Harmain, Masjid, Harmain, Makkah and Medina, mashallah, they are for long hours. As it is the Harmain, you get multiple rewards. You get 1,000 times in the Masjid al Nabi and 100,000 in Masjid al Haram Makkah. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Zakir, regarding that uh, superb answer. I think we've, um, once again, we've learned an awful lot about uh, this particular aspect, the night prayer, uh, Qiyam al-Layl, um, during the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, and hopefully we will all take as much benefit as possible and implement it during this Ramadan and the coming Ramadans, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, I truly hope, inshallah, that you have benefited enormously and you've learned lots and lots about the night prayer. And I would wish you to continue watching our series, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. Tomorrow, we will be discussing the topic, Qiyam al-Layl, the night prayer, part two. So, join us again, same time, tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.